Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today on The Mountain Garden we're talking about water treatment systems. Since we live in the middle of the redwood forest, we depend on well water for all of our water. The well is actually about 500 feet down the hill, about 300 feet of elevation and about 500 feet across, and it pumps right up here to this water treatment system. This is a 5,000 gallon storage tank. Like many people on well water in the United States, our well water is full of things that most city people don't really want in their water. There's a lot of iron, there's a lot of manganese, there's a lot of calcium, and occasionally, according to our water tests, there has been coliform bacteria in that water. We don't really know the source of the coliform bacteria. There are a number of different speculations. It could just be that our aquifer has it hanging out in there, or it could be that someone around has some sort of problem with their well, wasn't properly capped, and something is going down into the well and infecting the rest of the aquifer. Whatever the cause, it is definitely a problem, and it is something that we need to address, even though the numbers are below the safe limits. First off, why do we need to remove some of these? Well, iron, of course, will turn things orange. So if you have a lot of iron in your water and you're trying to wash your whites in your washing machine, then your whites won't get white. They'll actually start turning orange over time. Manganese tends to turn things black, and so it actually does exactly the same thing, only with black stains. And it's really obvious when you take a look at the water and it has kind of a slightly orange tinge to it, and then you let it sit for a while and you end up with a black film at the bottom of things. It won't hurt you. Neither one of those things is bad for people to drink. It just doesn't do so well when it comes to washing laundry and doing a number of other things. Calcium causes hard water deposits on your toilets, your sinks. It also causes soap to not work as well, so you have to use more soap in your dishwasher, more soap in your washing machine. Things don't suds properly in the shower, so it feels like you aren't really cleaning your hair, things like that. In addition to the minerals, we have another common problem for well users in the U.S. We have hydrogen sulfide in the water. It's caused by decaying matter from a long, long time ago that's down there in the ground, and it has that rotten egg smell when you turn on a faucet. The big way to get rid of hydrogen sulfide is just to allow it to come out of the water, because it does come out of solution very easily once the water is at regular atmospheric pressure. That's part of the reason we have this 5,000 gallon tank here. Of course, tanks are required in our fire district for other reasons, but it also is a great way of removing hydrogen sulfide from your water. You basically pump the water into the tank, and because you're not using all that 5,000 gallons right away, the hydrogen sulfide just comes out of solution, and the water that comes out of the tank doesn't smell anymore. Now that the water is basically a captive audience in our 5,000 gallon tank, we can start treating it, and the first stage is ozonation. There are an awful lot of water treatment ozone systems available out there, and we got kind of duped into buying one right up front because we didn't know that there were other options out there in order to assemble one yourself. The big thing is that the parts inside this box, and I won't tell you exactly who we got it from, they're all basically the same price, and they're all basically the same thing. Inside we have a fluorescent tube, and the fluorescent tube is a special UV generating fluorescent tube. It's inside a case, and because air is passing across it, it generates ozone. This is exactly the same thing that you'll find at spa supply stores, because spas and hot tubs use the same ozone generation mechanism and the same ozone delivery system nine times out of ten for most hot tubs. So you can actually assemble it yourself an awful lot cheaper with parts out there. That's what we've done over time, because over time we've had to replace just about everything, so we're only using the original case that our original ozone system came with. The other way of generating ozone is a corona discharge system, and that's this little module right here. And we have both of those in this particular case because I wanted a little bit more ozone in the tank since our water turnover rate is so high. We use the tank not just for household water, but also for irrigation water, and since all the water has to go through that system, we wanted a little bit more ozone than just the UV lamp would deliver. You can buy the Corona Discharge parts from most spa places as well. When it comes to the air pump to deliver this ozone into your tank, that's where things get a little bit different. I'm actually using a pond air pump here. This is a uh, Danner Manufacturing AP40 air pump, and it's a great air pump. You can find it on Amazon. It is a little bit more expensive than the spa-specific air pumps, but it delivers an awful lot more air, and it also allows you to put the air stone lower in your tanks. That way you get better turnover and better ozone impregnation in the water. The ozone is delivered to the tank via a nylon air stone that's about four feet below the surface of the water. It's hard to see in the video, but it's way down there in the tank. The result is that anything that's oxidizable will oxidize in the tanks. That's iron, manganese, etc. They'll all oxidize, come out of solution, and then either settle on the bottom of the tank or be caught by a mechanical filter that I'll show you in a bit. The ozone will also kill any bacteria that's living in the tank. So if anything like a leaf falls in your tank or dust or spores that blow in the tank, that sort of thing, they'll all be killed by the ozone, helping to keep it sanitary. Coming out of the tank, we have a one and a half horsepower booster pump right there, and then we have a large pressure tank to help keep the water at a consistent pressure. Things then split between the house and the garden, right over there, and for the household water, we then enter a 20 inch tall filter body, and this uses a graduated filter element, it's a spun graduated element, 
And uh, over here you can see a used element. You can see all that iron and manganese that's caught in that filter. You can all catch it mechanically at this point because of the ozonator. Ozonation and mechanical filtration is sufficient for kitchen uses like drinking water, ice cubes, cooking, that sort of thing. You have no problem making clear ice cubes with the water after that process is done. However, it doesn't really do anything for calcium removal as well as extra iron removal for washing whites in your washing machine. That's where we have a water softener. We're on well water, so we have a high iron and calcium content. We also wanted to be able to deliver a good shower experience, which means we decided to oversize our water softener here. We found this one online, I believe it was watersofteners.com, and it's much larger and offers much better flow characteristics than the ones you'll find at Sears, Home Depot, or Lowe's. Those are typically much, much smaller units, and it's really obvious when you take a look at the plumbing connection sizes. This one uses one inch plumbing connections. A lot of those ones out there use either one half or three quarter inch connections. It seems that there's a lot of misinformation about water softeners out there. Water softeners don't just remove calcium. They trade calcium for something else, and that something else has to be either sodium or potassium. So you have to put either salt or potassium pellets in the tank on the outside, and that's what actually flushes the resin bed to get the calcium out. So it's really just an ion exchange thing going on. It also tends to accept iron, so iron comes out in that same process along with the calcium. A lot of the misinformation centers on that sodium or that potassium. Yes, this system does raise the sodium or the potassium levels on the water coming out of it. It just really means that you shouldn't be drinking this water on a regular basis. It's not going to hurt you to brush your teeth with it or even have a little sip of water now and then from this. But if, especially if you have high blood pressure problems, you don't want to be drinking this water on a regular basis. So you should exclude the water softener system from your kitchen plumbing. So you shouldn't cook with it, you shouldn't drink with it, probably shouldn't be making ice cubes and that sort of thing with it long term. It's okay on a short term basis, but long term you will end up raising your sodium or potassium intake. After all those treatment processes are complete, we have clean water for washing our hands, washing our dishes, washing our laundry, etc. We don't have any iron spots, we don't have any calcium deposits in our sinks or our toilets. And most importantly, we don't have any of that rotten egg smell. Especially if you already have a cistern or a water tank in place, I highly encourage you to give ozonation a try. A side benefit of the ozonation system is that ozonated water tends to act a little bit like OxyClean in the wash. So it helps keep your whites whiter. It also helps remove wine stains, strangely enough. If you're looking at getting an ozonation system for your water system and you already have a water tank or a cistern, I highly recommend that you try this yourself. You can again, as I said, find an awful lot of these parts either on Amazon or at spa supply companies and save a great deal of money versus buying a package system. There are only a few parts you have to find from a company that's more dedicated towards water system delivery. And really that's just the ozonator air stone that actually goes inside the tank in your water tank. That one I haven't really been able to find a reliable source for outside of someone like Triple Ozone or uh, Ozone Nation or any of those other places that are out there online. The rest of the parts are all pretty easy to find and I encourage you to go ahead and try that yourself. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Again, I'm Alex and this has been TheMountainGarden.com. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of our latest videos and all the crazy things that we do around here.